It's been a while since the last time we saw each other, uh, but here we are in our headquarters in San Francisco, and we're gonna unveil the world's first robotic system that's modular for manufacturing cell therapies. Cell therapies are a new, very exciting therapeutic modality which holds a lot of promise in many applications. It's a new type of drug because it's a living drug. The cells of the patient or of a donor are what cures the patient. So it's not a chemical entity, it's not a molecule, it's actually a living cell that cures you. Last time we were talking about robots that manufacture small molecule drugs. This time we're focusing on robots that manufacture cell therapies. This is a big deal because cell therapies are completely changing medicine but today they are manufactured completely manually. The same process is done robotically, and these are the systems that do it. We can unlock a level of scale and a level of the affordability and reach for these therapies that was not possible until now. You may notice the modules are larger because the instruments used to make cell therapies are larger. Some of these instruments are actually pretty huge. For that, we now have a double module, which is pretty much, you know, American fridge size. <laughs> that's kind of that's messed up, man. <laughs> our approach to automating cell therapies is by teaching our robots to use industry standard instruments. As you can see behind me, there is really a wide range of instruments. We're announcing more, we keep announcing more, because that's what makes it easy for a pharma company to adopt automation if they can just translate their process without changing it. You can see a similar approach as before. There is a robotic arm on a rail, except that the rail now is twice as long and the robotic arm has four times the payload because cells are grown in vats containing cells and media and reagents. So it's completely flexible, not only in hardware, but of course also in software and process order. Some manufacturing processes are very complex and they contain a lot of different steps. So what we've done here is to break down the process into a very modular system, very similar to our robotic system. There's no software coding knowledge necessary to operate it. The Process Creator app is really simple and easy to use, but also allows for a lot of customization and flexibility when you're making your process. Robotic nerd consideration, this is still a collaborative robot, which means it has force and torque sensing at every joint, which means it's safe to operate, and it can also use essentially the sense of touch. A big difference, a big update is that this robot is actually a self-contained hard wall clean room. Inside it's ISO 7, it's very important to make sure that everything that gets in is actually not contaminated and sterile. We do that through the only green module, an operator would then insert cartridges or retrieve products. Vaporized hydrogen peroxide is released in order to sterilize everything. The most frequent source of contamination are human operators. A big point of this sort of approach to automation is to make the processes much more reliable. There is something I really want to say, the data. <laughs> we've just released the preprint uh, of a paper that we wrote together with UCSF, but the most important part is that the cells grow the same way robotically and manually. So read the paper, but they grow the same. We kind of proven the point that the robots are equivalent to best case human operators. So kind of a big deal, yes. <laughs> as your team grows as a technical founder, it can be complicated to delegate the technical execution. But by now our team is large enough that for the last three, four years, I've had to progressively delegate it all. And yet that is needed if what you're building has a certain scale. You can't build it on your own. It's unavoidable. And for me, it was probably one of the most challenging things to learn. Obviously, building a system that manufactures cell therapies is a tall order. It's a very complex, it's a very ambitious uh, project. A big challenge for us was miniaturization. In particular, it's important that the robot fits within a normal production floor. So you don't need to change your facility to install the robots, and that was super important. Oh yes, another challenge is all these modules have an air filtering system right here. Before we actually had electronics under it, now we package together electronics and air filtering in the top section. So this focus on ease of use, ease of adoption, without changing your process. You can just use robots 
and your process magically, basically, is automated now. Six months from now, um, there's two updates that I hope to be discussing with you next time we see each other. One is deploying the systems at scale. We might be able to visit them deployed in some of the leading pharmaceutical organizations in the world. There are a couple of secret R&D projects uh, that we've been working on, in particular in terms of new therapeutic modalities, and I can't wait to tell you more about that. When we started Motivate Labs as a team of engineers and scientists, mostly shocked by how manual pharmaceutical manufacturing was, that was true when we started about small molecules. It became more true now with cell therapies. It will be even more true in the future with gene therapies, mRNA, and a range of modalities that are coming online and being approved. Every patient should get drugs that are optimized specifically to their history, to their genome, to their particular illness. It is just not possible to make these next generation drugs by hand, manually. So that's the role we see for us in the pharma industry, enabling all these therapies to reach all the patients through automation. S3 is not exciting because we feature new companies, but because we'll keep featuring them. It's so cool that A, we got to do that for Multiply, and then B, they chose to even announce their entire cell therapies robot through S3. I'm honored uh, that, they, that they chose to do that. It's incredible technology, and I think it's a really good sign for the quality of the show that we're building as well. So the book I read and actually started reading back when we first featured Multiply Labs, the Song of the Cell by Dr. Siddharth Mukherjee. And when I look back on this book, I think my favorite part was actually the intro. And he really did a great job painting the picture of Emily Whitehead, who was one of the first patients to receive this experimental T-cell therapy. And it worked amazing. And then it also didn't work when they didn't get it quite right, which I think is just a testament to how precise and careful and perfect cells need to be in order for therapies like this to work. I highly recommend this book to everyone, especially like hard tech, non-bio people, because it did a great job of explaining how the science got to where it is today, especially in the earlier chapters. They, they talk about how maybe it kind of got a little fractured um, in the early days of research and discovery. I don't know. I, I'm someone that thinks the last hundred years were defined by semiconductors, defined by bits, ones, and zeros. I think it still will be in the 21st century, but I really believe personally that the 21st century will very much be defined as when humanity begins to understand the engineering building blocks of life itself around us. And Multiply's Cellular Therapies Robot is a big step in that direction, so very exciting stuff. Uh, thank you again for watching. I'll see you next week. And in the meantime, keep on building the future.